In this video, we're gonna break down the Apple ICT-5, aka Staff, Software Engineer Interview Process and Interview Questions. Here's the most important stuff that I've learned. Number one, the TLDR, the stuff you gotta remember. Apple is a Y company, there's no typical Apple interview, and they have silos, but you can use them to your advantage. When I say why, I mean, Apple's not like Amazon or Meta when it comes to the way that they have a North Star for their decision-making process in interview rounds. Those two companies only care about the results that you get more than anything else. Google is more of a how company. They care about your thought process. Apple, like Netflix, is more of a why company. They're mainly focused on your motivation. Why do you want to work for our company? This is always asked in interview loops, but it's never a conversation. At Apple, it's like a 10-minute conversation. And your job is to actually elicit emotion from the interviewer. Strange, but true, and very unique to Apple. Secondarily, there's no typical Apple interview. Every single team's going to have a different process. They take pride in this. They like that they don't have to go through HR or other hoops to change the details of their interview. They can make a loop just for this role, this very niche skill set, and then find this person. And they like that a lot. It makes it harder to prep for as a candidate, but there are still ways to prep for it. How to use their silos to your advantage as a candidate is that some teams get not enough candidates at Apple and other teams very obviously get way too many candidates. But when it comes to how to get referrals at Apple, it's a little bit different. So we'll talk about how to get referrals at Apple to take advantage of that a little bit later. Getting into the rest of the process here. So Apple is known for vertical integration. I probably don't have to tell you that. It's one of the reasons they have so much control over the market and so much market share. It's not just a cliche. Privacy and ecosystem cohesion are how they think philosophically. So it's good to show this in your ICT-5 interview, mainly when you're designing systems that you want to make considerations that map to that same philosophy. This is pretty obvious as well, but they're really known for technical innovation and they follow a lean hiring model. They can have weird reporting structures where a VP has a staff engineer just reporting to them and maybe like 30 other engineers. So think of their technical leaders as being more hands-on regardless of how high level they are throughout their entire engineering orgs. It's just an Apple thing. Apple pays well, we all know that, but there are a few details that are worth mentioning that dictate or at least factor into how your compensation is dictated. So as you can see here, here's the level and the corresponding total comp. Um, ICT5 is staff. ICT6 is senior staff-ish or principal, depending on what company you're comparing it to. They do pay you based on where you're located. So the unfortunate reality is if you live in Cleveland, you're just going to make less for the same job as somebody living in a tier one cost of living area. When it comes to their compensation packages, they have a totally even vesting schedule, which is nice. They also have a tendency to... Uh, pack equity in as the main component of a package, the more senior you get. So the more senior you get, the more you're skews towards equity, which is pretty normal. What's abnormal is that Apple recruiters are tenured AF. They are the most experienced out of all the FANG companies, I could say with confidence, uh, and most tech companies as well. So the tricks that work at most tech companies don't work at Apple. For example, most tech companies all tech companies are going to ask you how much money you want to make before they give you an offer. And at most places, you not saying a number first works because when they give you their first offer, they want to impress you. So sometimes it's higher than you would have originally asked for had you said a number first. Apple knows that's true. So I don't know if they have a process for this, but it seems to be pretty common where if you don't say a number first, they'll just lowball you. So again, the tricks that work at other companies don't work at Apple when it comes to the money. But if you got leverage, they're still going to pay out incredibly compared to, you know, most companies that are out there in the world. So when it comes to Apple's process, it's really key to understand that there's no typical Apple interview. So what that means is every team is going to have a different interview. So the best way to prep for this interview that you have at Apple is to learn about the service that your team works on. And even if you can, other services that this service interacts with. This is common because when they customize the round to the niche position they're hiring for, learning about the domain 
is going to give you a leg up compared to if you didn't learn about the domain, like you might do in another company and get away with. So Apple interviewers aren't given any training. They can start interviewing day one. They're given total carte blanche to ask whatever they want with no oversight. And there's a lot of variance between teams. So this makes the process highly unpredictable. Because they can focus on the domain and just test you on the domain, one thing that they'll do is for a team that just writes a bunch of Kotlin code, they'll just grill you on Kotlin for their whole technical screen. That's highly abnormal for other tech companies. The important thing here, though it's always important for you to ask your recruiter what the next round of interviews is going to pertain to, it's way more important at Apple. And it's more important to follow up because they don't always give you helpful, actionable answers the first time you ask. So ask until you get the answer that you're looking for in terms of the amount of detail you want. So the really interesting thing about Apple is that they're dogmatic. They've kind of earned the right to be because so many people love their brand. So they love it when you use a language that's, you know, core to their system, like Objective-C or Swift. They love it when you have experience directly with stuff in their ecosystem. But if you don't have anything that directly maps their ecosystem, emphasize stuff that's almost just as good, such as times that you've solved scalability challenges and low latency or high throughput environments, patents that you've got, open source contributions that you've got, either one that reflect innovation, even if it's outside of their stack. So recruiters at Apple, again, they're a little bit more advanced. So you wanna be ready for a little bit more of an advanced recruiter screen. Probably the same general logistics questions. Definitely don't say number first in the recruiter screen. You can say one later when you're closer to the offer stage, but also be ready for some motivation questions. Again, they're a why company. Imagine they're gonna ask you why Apple. Imagine they're not just gonna settle for an answer. They're gonna want you to elicit emotion from them. We'll get into how to tell that story later, but the recruiters are the ones you wanna be a little bit more ready for in this recruiter round. The tech screens, they're gonna vary a lot. Whatever stack this team uses, Try to, use, try to use the same programming language. I wouldn't say that in most technical interviews, but it does go a long way at Apple. If all the languages they use, you have no experience in, don't go learn it from scratch, but for everyone else that can get by, get by. As always, if you're at the staff level or above, like you can always skip rounds, especially if you're busy. Some of the most senior candidates can get away with more just for asking for what they want. Make sure you do that if that applies to you. This is interesting. Each team at Apple is going to have a different process, but we've noticed some challenge for how they evaluate your code quality. They're going to evaluate you on four factors, correctness, efficiency, ecosystem fit, and code quality. Another thing that's in line with their like kind of dogmatic approach is if you know their coding conventions and you write code according to those conventions, you're going to seem like you're already a fit for this team. And then if you're writing in Swift, when it comes to error handling, use result types so you can enforce explicit error checks. Not every loop is going to have a product round, but for the one that does, you're going to want to use Apple's product philosophy. Again, communicate within the same terms of their dogma so you're using shared language. Number one, and this applies to talking and system design interviews as well. So this is the kind of language you would use. It's like we should empower users without comprising simplicity. We should use frameworks like Core ML or HealthKit. Those are in their ecosystem, so they really like that. And then as always, even though it's cliche, we want to build products that are focused on security and privacy. All right, this is the big money here. So Apple is very strange when it comes to how they assess culture fit. Their behavioral rounds are in a league of their own. If not their own, maybe Netflix is there too, and there really aren't that many companies that are in that league. And what that is, is they're a why company. They're all about behavioral motivation. They want to hear you for 10 or 15 minutes, convince them that you are not only passionate about Apple, but your stories about Apple contain so much passion. Your interviewer gets passionate about Apple. So you have to tell stories that connect you to their products the closer that connection is, the better it is. So like, for example, last night I was FaceTiming with a really great friend from college. We set up a FaceTime date. It ended up lasting two and a half hours. We were listening to music. We were watching YouTube videos. And at the end, I actually told them, you know, this actually feels like we're normal friends again. And I really meant it. So without FaceTime, like, I don't know how we would have done that. So the idea is 
you tell a story that directly connects your life to that product and make it a real story, uh, but make it something that you are optimizing for passion on as opposed to optimizing for anything else, really. Okay, the system design round is unique at Apple because like Amazon, Apple loves reliability. If you don't know what to talk about in a system design round, dig in into how to make the system more reliable. There are obviously going to be a lot of other points like we've mentioned earlier in terms of using the same philosophy that they like when it comes to privacy, when it comes to vertical integration, and a bunch of other points that we made earlier. Those would also apply to system design round tips. Hiring manager rounds are going to be really similar to skip level manager rounds in that they are behavioral motivation focus screen is the most important thing. You can also expect their leaders to be super hands-on and super tactical more so than usual. So those rounds are usually going to be a pretty intense mix of culture fit screen and technical questions. Okay, that is it. If you want to ace your Apple SWE interview for the ICT5 level, check out our software engineering prep course. We got behavioral specifically for the staff level tips. We got system design and we got coding. Check it out now, starting for free at tryexponent.com.